Hey guys, Mel Modesty here for my top 10 comic book series of 2012. Let's start this off with number 10, Multiple Warheads, written and drawn by Brandon Graham. This is his first full work in color, if I am correct, and it looks absolutely stunning. The story is about Nico and his girlfriend Sexica as they travel a sort of um, post-apocalyptic Russia, but not really, and it's really just a fun series. Nothing special in the storyline department, but it has some funny jokes, some clever stuff. There's singing cigarettes in it, which is always cool, um, and there is beautiful artwork, and there's a bunch of naked girls, and that's, that's pretty okay, too. So, yeah. Number nine. The Avengers, Marvel Now. We only have two issues, but this series is off to a rock and start by Jonathan Hickman. A very epic and grand series. I hate using that word epic, but I really feel like it perfectly describes this series. Just a really great series, and if you want to read something Marvel Now, this is what I would suggest reading. Next up, number eight. Revival. Although I have only read the first and third issue of this, I really, really love this series. It is just really cool, and if you're not reading it, you should. It is... it's not really a zombie tale. It's about people can't die anymore. There was this occasion called Revival Day, and now people just don't die. And it's just really interesting. Like, there's this old woman who's ready to die, and she's pissed off that she can't die, so she pulls out her teeth every day, and they just regrow. And it's a very violent... well, not really violent, but just some parts are very disgusting. It's called a rural noir, and it is phenomenal. Number seven. The Rocketeer Cargo of Doom. This is the most fun I have had reading a comic book series all year. It is just jam-packed with action, with comedy, with everything. I mean, there's fucking dinosaurs with jetpacks in this, for God's sake. It is just a really, really fun series, and if you didn't read this, pick it up and trade. It is fun. That is the best way I can possibly describe this series. It's just fun. And the polar opposite of fun... Daredevil, End of Days, number six on my list. Wow, is this book depressing. This is basically a um, what-if story. It is the last story of Daredevil, and it's fantastic. Brian Michael Bendis did probably my favorite comic book run of all time with Daredevil. I have not read, I have not read Alias yet, and I have not read Miracle Man yet, but so far, out of every superhero series I've read, he has done my favorite run on a superhero of all time, and this is a great return to form, very depressing, very dark, and very, very good. Number five, sticking with dark, we got Harvest, the series about black market organ sales, and it's cool because all of the covers connect together. And it's just a very, very creepy story with very good characters, and it's just really good. The dialogue's really good. The characters are really well done. None of them are, well, they're two-dimensional because they're on the paper, but they're all very three-dimensional characters otherwise, and great series. Pick this up and trade if you're not getting it in issues. Number four. You guys are probably surprised just to see this so down low on my list. Batman by Scott Snyder. The... My favorite Batman run, basically. I mean, I might be forgetting one, but I don't think so. I think that Scott Snyder is the best author for Batman of all time. It started with the last half of Court of the Owls, which I read some of, not all of Court of the Owls, and... It was a great storyline, and then Death of a Family, possibly the greatest Batman story ever told. I think that these three issues, number 13, 14, and 15, are just such great character work, and are just really, really, really fantastic. If you guys aren't reading this, I do not know why.
third on my list is a really big surprise. Godzilla, The Half-Century War. I can't say more about this book. Um, I was really not looking forward to this going in. Only reason I bought it up first is because of Stoko. I hate Godzilla, to be honest with you. I don't like a single thing about him. But this series is just really well done. It really focuses on the military and how they deal with Godzilla. The artwork in this is absolutely amazing. Like, oh my god, I would love posters of all of these covers around in my room because it's some of the most beautiful artwork this entire year. It's just fantastic. If you guys aren't reading this, I don't blame you because it took me a bit of a... Uh, it took me a while to finally decide I was going to read it, and I had to convince Agent 42Q by calling him out in a video. Hopefully he's happy I did that. Hopefully he likes the series, but... I love it, so. And I think he does. He hasn't done a review, but from his comments, it seems like he enjoys it. And then number two, Mark Wade's Daredevil. I actually, I was, this whole year I've been trying to hunt down the earlier issues, and then I just decided, fuck it, they're too hard to get, so I'm just gonna start reading at the new story arc. So I basically read these this weekend, and they're phenomenal. Um, it is very fun, but it's not as fun as Rocketeer. It does have a, um, better story to it. It's very intriguing. There's a lot of mystery in it. There's a lot of action. Daredevil's my favorite superhero of all time, and this is a great run. The covers are fantastic. The artwork is fantastic. I love Coyote. He is a great bad guy. And... Just when you think this story is going one way, it just curves off and goes another way. Tons of twists and turns. Check it out. Great stuff. And then, my number one series of the year, which I'm sure most people will be giving this their number one series of the year, and for good reason, Saga. This series is fucking phenomenal. If you're wondering why I have so many in my hands, it's because... I started reading them, and I loved them so much that I had to go hunt down first printing, so I have many duplicates. I have duplicates of every single issue, and I even have three of some of them. And it's a wonderful series. If if you're not reading this, just go buy it. Just do it. Um, the, the trade paperback is $10. Just such a great series. It's about Marco and Alana, and they're these two characters who are from opposite species who are warring each other, and they have this baby, and everyone is trying to kill them because if this baby is, like, becomes well-known, it could stop the war, because it's basically, like, two hating people, you know, creating a baby. It would be like back in the, um, days of slavery if there was a black and white baby but even more extreme because these are two completely different species. And so basically they're just trying to survive and a bunch of people are hunting them and it's just a great series. Brian K. Vaughn is such a fantastic writer, especially for the issues because he um, just does a great job with cliffhangers and Fiona Staples is a wonderful artist. Um, if you guys haven't seen my top ten covers of the year, this is possibly my favorite artwork all year. Just a phenomenal series, and if you guys aren't reading this, you're doing a huge disservice to yourselves, because it is great. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you're enjoying all of these Best of 2012 videos, and let me know what your top 10 comic series of the year are. Um, let me know what you disagreed with, what you agreed with, if you are reading anything you think I would like, if I have turned you on to a comic book, let me know that too, and I will see you guys later.